5th of September, 1979. Tape one in the ongoing life story of John Winston Ono Lennon. Talk about Nine Newcastle Road because that's the first place I remember. And it's a good way to start. Red brick, front room, never used, old curtains drawn, picture of a horse and carriage on the wall, which ended up at Nanny's place, not to Anne, who's still living in Rock Ferry, Cheshire. And she sold it. First thing I remember is a nightmare. There was only uh, three bedrooms upstairs, one in the front on the street and one in the back and one teeny little room in the middle. This is boring, I can't be bothered doing it. Let's think of something else. Well, I was listening uh, to the radio on Dylan's new single or album, whatever the hell it is, came on. But uh, everybody's got to get served. <laughs> I mean, what was it? Every, you've got to serve someone. You've got to serve somebody. Hmm. So he wants to be a waiter now. He wants to be a waiter for Christ. The backing was mediocre by Jerry Wexler and the singing was really pathetic and the words were just embarrassing. So, here we sit, watching the mighty Dylan and the mighty McCartney and the mighty Jagger slide down the mountain blood and mud in their nails. Well, that's the way the world is. <laughs> that's the way the world is, oh yes. The difference between now and a couple of years back is that whenever there was a new thing out by any of the aforesaid, I used to feel a sense of panic and competition. And now I just feel like even the last few months it's changed. At least I would send out for their albums or something just to hear it. That doesn't seem any point now. Take a break. How do we break? Just put it off. Still, even now, talking about them or thinking about them, still really being involved in it. Because the ultimate disassociation would be not even to know that they had enough. <laughs> But now at least I get pleasure in it instead of panic. The main pleasure being, of course, that it's all a load of shit. So I suppose I'll always feel competitive with them because they were from that same generation. But when I hear something like pop music by Robin Scott or the Blondie single, I really enjoy it, you know. I don't feel competitive about it. Well, he who laughs, 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 laughs. Read Truman Capote's interview with himself in this week's or month, whatever, interview, magazine. And it wasn't bad, but it wasn't any better than the one I did two years ago. 
Although at the time I thought it originated, but somebody told me Bernard Shaw had done it. I like that remark some woman made about Bernard Shaw that his brains had gone to his head. <laughs> like birds. Well, of course, the bagpipes got me right back to Edinburgh, which is one of my favorite dreams. And, uh, the Edinburgh Festival and the tattoo in the castle when all the bands of the world armies would come and march and play. And the favorites used, I think they were usually the Americans because they swung like shit, apart from actually the Scots, who were really the favorites. And I always remember feeling very emotional about it, especially when they did the bit at the end where they put all the lights out and there's just one guy playing the bagpipes lit by a lone spotlight. Okay. Well, in 1981, I'll take Sean there. Because that's a good year to go. I always felt free in Scotland. probably the same uh, feeling I get in Japan, actually. It's the feeling of being in a foreign country, and therefore you're not, you don't belong to the, you don't have to deal with the social mores so much. Free from everything. It's easier to be yourself in a foreign country. I think that's why so many people go crackers. <laughs> And they get on holidays in those places. The freedom is too much for them. Well, it's easier to think than talk. Just, I was just remembering the time when I had my hand on my mother's pit in number one Blomfield Road. In, uh, off Mother Avenue, near Garston. That's when I was about 14. Took a day off school, I was always doing that and hanging out in their house. And I was lying on the bed and I was thinking, I wonder if I should uh, do anything else. You know? And it was a strange moment, because I actually had the hots, as they say, for some rather lower class female that lived on the opposite side uh, of the road. But uh, I always think that I should have done it. <laughs> Presuming she would have allowed it. The thing I wanted to add about McCartney, Dylan, Jagger, et al is that they're all company men in various disguises but basically company men forgetting the uh, singing dwarf Mr. Simon and by the way mother was wearing a black angora short sleeve round neck sweater not too fluffy, maybe it was that other stuff, cashmere. That's it, like cashmere. Soft wool, anyway. And I believe that tight, dark, green, yellow mottled skirt. Hey-ho. I also remember seeing her going down on Twitchy, or otherwise known as Robert Dykins, Dykins, D-Y-K-I-N-S, 
uh, Bobby Dykins, her second husband. I don't know if she ever married him or not. She was under the bed sheets and I wandered into the room. So I was staying there. Same period, 14 on, 13 on, or whatever. And I can't remember exactly what I felt. Shocked, I know that. Because I, I was already probably into it myself. I probably uh, wasn't that shocked. But the idea of going down on him, I think, a sleazy little waiter with the nervous cough and the thinning margarine-coated hair. He used to always push his hand in the margarine or the butter, it's usually margarine, and grease his hair with it before he left. He used to keep his tips in a big tin on top of a cupboard in the kitchen where I used to always steal them. And I believe Mother got the blame. That's the least they could do for me. Well, I'm sitting here waiting to be taken out to view yet another group of houses for our country retreat. This endless search for Scotland outside of New York, <laughs> within an hour of New York. Well, now I've given up Scotland and the ocean. I'm settling for a, some grass and a tree. I read... Uh, somewhere about some, uh, some guy saying that uh, you know about the sexual fantasies and urges that he had all his life when he was 20 and then when he was 30 he thought they'd cool down a bit and then when he got in his 40s he thought they'd cool down they didn't and they went on 60s 70s until he was still driveling on in his mind and he couldn't possibly do anything about it apparently so that rather well, I could not depressed, but I mean, I just thought, shit. Because uh, I was always waiting for them to lessen. But I suppose it's going to go on forever. Well, forever is a bit too strong a word there. Let's say, go on until you leave this body anyway. Let's hope. Maybe the game is to get conquer it, as they say, before you leave, otherwise you come back for more, and then who wants to come back just to come? Or maybe I read it in the Capote thing, I'll check that out. Well, well, here we are. Age 39, looking out of my hotel window. Wondering whether to jump out or get back in bed. So I got back in bed. 